1970 Chevelle SS big block car. Dang, Bama, there's no bumper. Damn. I think it's an SS, man. So he kind of wants a drag car that he can drive on the street. Yeah. That's a lot of whack, though. No way, man. That's a big ass tunnel, man. Obviously, we have a 55 Chevy here. Onward. Tally ho. Oh, man. Yeah, that's not cool. I Hold on. We almost got this car done, though. You ain't think we're gonna have problems here in the shop? One of these days, one of these days, I'm one of those kind of people that stay ready to keep from having to get that away. Man. I'm Joe Martin. I've been building cars and bikes since I was just a little kid. My team hunts down rusted wrecks. Are we gonna work today, Joe, or what? We knock out the ugly and put in the cool and turn these buckets of rust into street art. This is Iron Resurrection. Man, this is nice sitting over here while you're driving. VIP right here. Where's this Uber taking me, Mandy? Well, we're going over to... Let me guess. Bama Browns. So we have a customer named Mr. Clay. He's from Louisiana, and he wants us to build a 70 Chevelle and turn it into a drag car. Big, big personality. I is love. a fun guy. Hey, who you. from Louisiana is not fun? I contacted Mr. Joe because there's some young people around where I live at that think they have some things that are really bad. Well, I'm gonna educate them a little bit. If we're turning into a drag car, we're not looking for much, right? We're just no. looking for a solid foundation. A and shell on a title. Shell on a title. Yeah. So why are we going to Bama? Let's be honest, <laughs> Bama doesn't deliver too many solid foundations. Bama, you might want to keep on driving. Right. We'll see what old Bama Brown's gonna try to do today. Yeah. Good old Bama. Oh my God. What's a happening, oh. hot stuff? Well, you know, a couple of people called me and they said, you still got that 70 Chevelle. The Martin Brothers are looking for one. I'm the last call anyway, because everything I got is crap. But I actually had a pretty nice 70 Chevelle body. I got one for you that you're going to want right here. I call this car the unicorn. I don't show anybody but my best friends. 1970 Chevelle SS, real SS, big block car. Wait a minute. It's like a dream, isn't it? It is like a dream. I can't believe you actually have one. Oh, if you blur your eyes a little bit, it's like it's sitting on the assembly line. That's how clean that body is. We got the title with this car. You do. This is yeah. real. And it's the and this time it's real title. <laughs> it is a shell. It's, it's a frame. Still got the original wheels on it. And this is exactly what Joe Martin is wanting. I'm telling. Is you. it? And this is gonna go in your trailer today for $7,500. But wait. Good. You're really? welcome, I mean, you're what? welcome. I don't see any trim, I mean, this lights, is... and uh, dang, Bama, there's no bumper. Where's the cow hood? Well, now that's a, okay. In the deck lid, is it, it is... somewhere else? All right, let's take these one at a time. Instead okay, of go. a big list of what's wrong. You're, you're missing what's right. See, that's the deal. When you're buying a car, you want to act like it's a piece of junk. You don't know anything about it. It's just an old spell. But I know that they know that I know what it's worth. I was going to be at like 15 on this car, y'all. And I could probably sell this today for 10. But I came down to 7,500 okay. because of the love that okay. we have. Okay. That's a 70 Chevelle SS 396. And I got it. And they need it. And then we start negotiating like it's something I found in a field somewhere. That's a nice car. Have you got five grand on you? Bama! We oh have my God. so many parts left to buy. Have you noticed the part that's really missing is the part where y'all come up? <laughs> Give me the number. 2,000 bucks. What? $2,000? Now you're talking. I ought to make you leave, right? Where's the dog? All right, give me a real number, because it ain't two and it ain't 75. Let's get somewhere in between. 25. That's not, a, that's not the real number. Three grand and you got it. And you have the title. I do have the title. And it matches that VIN. <laughs> Why do you say that's that while you're laughing, dude? He no, literally started laughing. We don't have that happen so often. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Three, that was three grand. We'll do three. All right. Three thousand. It's a good deal. Oh, I think today oh, yeah. we got one over on Mr. Bama Brown. Did we, though? Because I guarantee he's saying the same thing. Oh, I'm glad somebody's making some money. I don't remember what I paid for, but you know me, I ain't gonna lose no money, so. Let's load it. Yeah, all right, go get it. Get out of here. You gonna be okay? I hope you're proud of yourself. I'm damn proud of myself. What you become. <laughs> Come on, Bama. Yeah. 
Well, you know how it is, Joe, when you send them off, man. Look at this thing, Mike. What is that thing? <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. Damn. This is a Bama Brown specimen? Oh, there's some Bama Brown right there, Mike. Oh, yeah. Just wait till you investigate oh. a little bit further. The Shag and Amanda showed up with the 70 Chevelle from Bama Brown, and I'm actually pretty surprised it's not too bad. Uh, 12 it? bolt. Must be an SS. Oh, yeah. Hey, Can't no be a real way. SS, no hey, way. way. That's what he said. Well, look at it. Bama had a 70 Chevelle. Damn, it's, I think it's an SS, man. Yeah, man, you got them down to 3,000. Here we get a title. Oh, and a yeah. title. Oh, man. From Bama, we got a title? Yeah. He couldn't believe it either. But he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, man, that that's all we know. need. So I think Clay will be really happy with it, and we'll go from being a Texas car to a Louisiana car now. Well, let's unload it, man. Yeah, let's do that. a 70 Chevelle. It's a good one to cut up because it is fairly solid, but still needed a lot of stuff. Plays into the drag race looking pro street styling. Great big tires in the back, big motor, little tiny ones in the front. But he kind of wants a drag car that he can drive on the street. Car's gonna get a lot of modification. We're gonna put a trick frame underneath it, cut the floors out, the roll cage, get the bumpers cleaned up on it. Clay's got a motor builder building a big massive cubic inch big block. So we're probably going to have to raise the cow induction up on it to uh, have room for it. One of the things Clay suggested was this color of blue, kind of a new Camaro blue. But put our own twist to the color. The 70 Chevelle is probably the most sought after Chevelle. It's one of my favorites. 70, for some reason, seemed to be kind of the pinnacle of the muscle car era. They're just iconic cars. I've never personally had one, so I'm kind of excited to work on the car because, you know, I like living vicariously through these customers. 70 Chevelle, just one of those ones off the list. So we got a really cool project in the shop here. We got a 55 Chevy Bel Air convertible. Very rare, very cool. Just don't see very many of these things. We worked on 55s before and mainly hard tops, but 55 convertible, that's pretty rare. Out of all the Bel Airs that were made in 1955, only 2% were two-door soft-top convertibles. Julio, the owner of the car, has had some trouble with this thing in the past. and It's bounced around a little bit, different shops. I've always been in love with the 50s cars, and so this has been a 25-year vision to get this thing done. I engaged in this project with a guy out in Arizona who made a mess of things, and so I found Joe and then asked if they would take over the project. The car's been kind of a heartache for Julio, but we're gonna to try to make it a one-stop shop, button up some paint, some interior, mechanicals, and get this thing back on the road for him. Well, here we got our customer Clay's 70 Chevelle. It smells funny. This car came in probably two months ago. It's made quite a transformation in just that short amount of time. And we basically just cut everything out. We gutted everything, cut the floors, cut the firewall, cut everything out of this thing. And the frame set at a ride height. Got the body basically tacked to the frame. Now we just gotta come in, do all the sheet metal work. Gotta do floors, tunnel. Got a lot of work left on this car. Hey, Kato, let's pull these doors off real quick. Okay. I already got the right size. Right on. Man. Well, you wanna start on the cage? Might as well. It's our next step, Mike. Yeah. Well, it'd be easier without those doors, that's for sure. Hell yeah. One of the main items of this car is yeah. this big old monster 555 cubic inch big block. Yeah. Meaning, <laughs> you gotta deal with some of the safety stuff. You know, the roll cage. And I feel like a dune buggy. The roll cage is critical in a car like this. You gotta make sure the car's not gonna flex. But the most important thing is that the car rolls, gonna protect the driver. It just makes the car that much more safe. I think if we uh, get this piece right here going, Mike, behind mm. the seat, and uh, I say we start from there. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. I like as easy as that. I like the way you say it, Joe. <laughs> Let the gums begin. I think we're there, Kato. Oh, man, look at that. Man, that's right on. You got it? Yeah. Couple more degrees, Kato. You ready, man? Here we go. All right. All right, man. Now that we got this in, I'll start doing some door bars. Let me go build that. I'm waiting. Oh. 
Mike, you ready to weld these in, brother? I hear today in 70 Chevelle, we're still on the roll cage here. Well, no, I sat there contemplating how we're going to tie all those in into the back. Well, here, let me show you. Let's see if all this fits. Right. We're at the point now where we're putting the bars that go into the rear of the car. Grab that in the back. I'm going to climb in here. Hold on. Oh, man, look at that. I'm just sitting back here. Oh, man, that's pretty good. Move yours over that way just a tad, Joe. Right in there. That looks pretty good, Derek. Yeah. Are we ready to tack these in or what? Man, I think so. I mean, if you're good back here. Man, that looks good, there. Yeah, I say let's tack them in right. the back there, Mike. We can set this. Make sure we're square up here. Here we go. Sound like a bumblebee this morning. I got one more for you, Mike. Well, you want to eyeball this one first or what? Just eyeball it. Yeah. When you're doing this tubing, you do a deal on the end of what's called fish mouth, where one tubing can join to the other tubing and have a nice little fit to it. And if you're off just a quarter inch, you kind of just ruin the pipe and have to throw it away because you have too big of a gap to weld. Does it look like it needs to be clocked a little bit or no? You know, it needs to go, it needs to go like this, man. Kind of roll over. See what I'm saying? Like it's, I see it. It's like right here. I see it. It looks like that bar needs to go just like that. I see it. Bit. Oh, that's it there, man. Whatever you did, we're good. You like it right there? I do. The measurements are real critical. If it's not measured properly, I mean, it doesn't join right. If it doesn't join right, you shouldn't use it. That's why we're so cautious with the measurements, checking it two or three times before we cut it and bend it and notch it. Quit it, dog. You know what I'm going to do. You know how I am, Joe. I, might I do one. this just to aggravate myself. Oh. You, you know what I mean? You know me. Double check my eye. Yeah, yeah. I always go behind Joe. He can pretty much eyeball this stuff, but I always go behind him and check stuff. It's just something I've always done. And well, what's, what's the result, Mike? Well, let's put the other one in, dog. Need I say more? <laughs> and I don't know how many times I've checked him, but I don't think I've ever caught him wrong. But one of these days, one of these days, maybe when he gets a little older and his eyesight goes down a little bit, I'll get him. You need a welder? I got it. What, what the perfect tack. Let's see. It's gonna be a good day, boys. Oh man, that's it there. All right, I got another one. Let me bring it to you, Mike. All right, put square on it, Mike. Man, that's good right there, Joe. That's your huckleberry, son. Oh, the struggle is so real. So we got a Cromer Victor coming in today. We're pretty excited because he should be here any minute with our 55 Chevy bumpers. We got the guys thrashing on this thing. Uh, well, that's gone. So we got to get everything squared away so we can make sure nothing's leaking everywhere. Minor inconvenience. Hopefully this thing will be uh, starting here in the next couple minutes. Got oil pressure. Check for leaks. I think we're good. Can't wait to see these bumpers because we've done a lot of work to these things. We shortened them up, we tightened them up, we tucked them. It's going to be a testament to see how good of work we did once Victor chromes them, so we'll know here shortly. Hey, Joe. Damn, Victor. What's up, buddy? What do you got? We got me some chrome. Let's get you some chrome, buddy. Oh. Doing all right? Man, how you been, man? Oh, I can't complain. My name is Victor. Me and Joe have been together for 10 years. I've been doing all his chrome plating for him. Are you waiting for it? We're waiting, bumper. brother. Well, come on. We're waiting, Victor. All right. Can't yeah. wait to see this. Oh, man. Damn, Victor. Yes. Woo. Wow, man. It's like painting a car. Instead of paint, we nickel plate it twice and then chrome plate it. Chrome is just an acid to protect the nickel so it would not rust. Lay that right here, man. Let me get the front one so we can put it on. It's like jewelry. It is like jewelry, man. Oh, man. Ooh. Look at that, man. You want to try it on? Yep. Throw it in there, babe. Man, look at that. Man, that looks great, Victor. Victor came through, now we can finish this thing, man. Yes, sir. We've actually gotten a lot of work done on the 70 Chevelle cage. We've got all the main hoops in here. We've got the door bars in. We've got the crash bars in the front. Coming at you, Mike. We've got the struts going to the front of the frame. Put it with the perfect tack. So now that we got the major stuff in here, we can actually start working on the floors. For this particular car, you know, being a drag car with all this roll cage in here, that's got to be handmade. You can't put an OEM factory stamp floor back in here. The floors need to go in. They're going to fit around the cage and everything. I'll get K-Dub over here, and we'll start uh, making some templates and see if we can't get a floor in the sink. 
But right now I'm making my template for the floor for the 70 Chevelle. When I'm making these pieces, it has to be pretty close to perfect. So when I go cut it out, I can just pop it in. You want everything to be nice and line up tight. This part, on just your normal car like you would drive every day, is right under your gas pedals. I just got done putting some bead rolls in it. Gives it a little bit of extra strength and it makes it look a little bit nicer. It fits like a glove, just like I made it to fit. So now I can get the welders ready and weld this baby in. I got this 55 convertible here taking all this protective plastic wrap off of it so uh, I can get to wet sand in it. We put this on this car whenever it got here so no one would scratch it and mess it up. Now I'm just gonna come in here and sand everything and get it all ready for some paint. Yeah. You wouldn't think this stuff's that sticky. I'm just block sanding this whole car. We're just gonna fix some scratches and some blemishes in the paint. Brian, how's it looking, man? You got everything blocked up here, huh? Yeah, looking good. Just working nice. my way around the car. Well, good, man. About ready for some booth time, huh? Heck yeah. Man, it looks good. Ryan, let's get it bagged, and we'll get in the booth, brother. Heck yeah, sounds good. Oh, man. Yeah, it's not... There ain't no telling how long that's been there. Dude, I know. But I was unmasking this Bel Air here. I untaped it and I noticed this big crack right here in the paint. That piece is pretty sturdy, so I don't know why it's cracked, but someone may have leaned on it. Whoever did that, you know, just. Yeah, that's yeah. not cool. I guess it was flexing. All this was masked when it when the car was here, I guess, you know, so. It might have came from someone just leaning on it. Maybe someone ran into it or dropped something on it. Um, we probably better dig it out. All right, sounds good. I'll have to come in here and 80 grit this to where there's no crack anymore. You don't want to just fill over a crack that's already there. You have to take the crack away so it doesn't crack again later on. Voila. I got this crack fixed back here on this 55, so I'll get a little bit of 320 grit, sand that down, and then paint it. You got it? Yeah. Today we have Clay coming in, the owner of the Chevelle. And now is my time to get the seat prepared, ready for him. We've got to get the height right. That's one inch of foam right there. If I go back any further and he's got a helmet on, then that's... Well, you'll be just about right. Yeah. The only issue that we might have is getting him fit height-wise because the frame in this car has been built up so much. So we'll just have to see, and then we can start making adjustments from there. This Clay's a wide boy. Yeah, he is yeah, a wide so boy. Yeah, so he might have to trim some off the... Because I've got about an inch and a half on each side before it touches me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he'll be here in a minute, so we'll get him in here. I prefer the customer to come in frequently, as frequently as they can. You want them to be comfortable in the car, and so we definitely like them to see the progress. I'll try to get a good mock-up for him, but um, if anything, we might have to just build a nice little bottom lower pan and then just get a super firm one-inch foam, you know? But the transmission tunnel, that'll determine where the gas pedal's gonna go. And if we can get that in before Miss Clay gets here, then we can figure out where this footing's gonna be, you know? All right, well, let's make a transmission tunnel. All right. You gonna build it right here, Mike? Like, we stay up? Well, no, I was thinking about starting it over here, Justin. Come on, Mike. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. You're killing me. Take us old Mike. Let's build some stuff. Get our tunnel started. 
Let's you know what? Here. I'm in a singing mood today, too, Joe, so I'm going to drive you nuts, oh, dog. Oh, Lord have mercy, Mike. I, well, look, you already got a car on the Please phone. Please don't sing, Mike. This is a template for the transmission tunnel. So this will connect to the firewall and then to the floor. So everything's been kind of moved back in this car. So once we get this in there, we can actually get clay in there and establish exactly where we're going to set it. You got a slack get over there? Oh, yeah. Does that fit but, in that tunnel? But, well, I'm short. Let me see. That's kind of important, though, Jose. We missed that, man. We'll have to re Let me see, man. re lift it. Something's wrong here, brother. Man, that should be right on, my man. We're short. No way, man. That's a big ass tunnel, man. Oh, Joe, we can't really oversize it and fit it back in here, though. We're going to have to get this thing right on. Because it needs to fit right up on the other side. I thought it too. The original template for the tunnel in the Chevelle is just a little bit too small, so we ended up having to build a bigger template. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Oh, come on back, come on back. All right, there, right. That's a giant tunnel. The local breaking. All right, right there, right there, man. Right about there. We got minimal Cleco room, but that's all right. Well, that's what we got fine, there, bro. Saved by the clean coop. Hey, we even better hope so. Ain't good enough. You know what? I can, I can pick up one kind of like it. Y'all get one. There we go. Yes, there we go. Look at that, man. Oh, man, we're there. Man, something, uh, something What's out of whack, Joe. What's it doing, man? Even with the bigger template, this trans tunnel is not fitting correctly. Clay and Michelle should be walking through the door any minute. And if we can't get this tunnel right, it's gonna just be a big delay. Bastard. I know, right? Man, something, uh, something out of whack, Joe. What's it doing, man? That's I need to twist this thing. Bastard, man. I know, right? Trying to get this trans tone in this Chevelle, and it's just not fitting. Uh, the, yeah, the driver's side needs yeah, to go Yeah, it needs forward. to go forward. Needs to go forward. Uh, that one needs to come back some. Eighth inch, all we need, Joe. Yeah. And it'll go. Man, it feels like a swamp in here today. It's just Louisiana swamp buggy. The car is right at home. Yeah, hell yeah. Did it move it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joe, what if we pull this plate go out right here? Let that one hold it. Let's pull this one out right here. This okay. will allow this thing to kind of roll All down right. and push it back up or something. Now, there we go. As quick as you can, put a Clico somewhere. Man, there it is. There it is. Look at that. That's it. Hey, man. Yeah. You know, this thing was a fighter, but all it took was a little bit of gum and it goes in. Game over. I'm getting tunnel vision, Joe. Tunnel vision, Mike? You, you funny man, Mike, aren't you? <laughs> go ahead you and say it, You're one of those funny guys, man. Uh -huh. So we got our transmission tunnel in the 70 Chevelle. Now, obviously, the transmission tunnel is going to determine where the pedals go, steering column. So right in time, because we got Clay and Michelle getting ready to pull up any minute. Clay's coming to see us, Chevelle. We're trying to get this seat mocked up, but uh, now that all the floors have changed, it's thrown it all off, so. I'm having to cut the frame on the back of the seat to get it down lower to the window line so it's not sticking up too high. I'm just kind of modifying the foam. I'm just getting it blocked up. The only thing I'm worried about is him sitting in there and being way too high when we've already taken it down. This is how it is. Got to get him comfortable. Man, is Clay here? Yep. Mr. Clay and Miss Michelle. There he is. Man. What's happening, Joe? How y'all doing? Good. Give Mama a hug. How you doing, Michelle? Hey, Joe. I'm Michelle Legrand. He's Clay Legrand. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm here to see my 70 Chevelle that Joe's been working on. <laughs> well, come on in, man. Let's look at this car. All right. Let's go. Well, you showed up in just a nick of time, Mr. Clay, because we got the seat ready for you. All right. Mr. Clay. Well, you there doing, Mr. Clay? I'm Ben. I'm Ben. 
Of all of the collectible old cars, the 70 Chevelle is one of the top of the list. Well, here's what we got here. We got the sidebars in. Yes, sir. So we left one side in for you to, to look at it. Of course, it's going to be easier to climb in when the car's down on the ground, you know? Yeah. No, that, then, that, that should be fine. There's enough room there for me to crawl through. Yeah. And then so what we did here, too, Ms. Cole, we come in here and tied all this up. Mm-hmm. Tied to the firewall. Yes, sir. And then, then those bars go up to the core support. I think it's going to be tied up pretty good. Well, I'm bringing you plenty of motor to put in it. You sure are, and we need that motor, too. I'm working on it. That's why I'm get the plate. This car is being built to be strictly from stop sign to stop sign. Red light to red light, eighth mile, quarter mile. It will be run on the track some. You want to climb in there? Yes, you bring sir. your climbing britches? Well, those will do, man. Those will do. Joe, let me explain something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm one of those kind of people that stay ready to keep from having to get that away. Man. Mr. Clay's ready, he said. He stays ready. Demer, he did like K-Dub. Y'all got, got all this buckled down where it ain't gonna well, fly? Well, well, it's half ass buckled, Mr. Clay. Hold on to something. For what? This seat will still go probably three inches back, four inches back. That's well, good, let's... Cause, cause the man that'll drive this a good bit on the track is way shorter than oh, me. Oh, well, that's, that's good, dude. You're not gonna be the track man, Mr. Clay? Do what? <clears throat> Clay, we've been working. Oh, he's about to change the subject. He's changing the subject. Y'all need to ask her about the last, time, the last time I went down the track. Do you uh, see my face? Like, he is oh, never man. driving. I got fired. I had uh, a little unfortunate incident my last time at the track. He ran into a wall. <laughs> my wife would rather that I didn't do that anymore. So I've honored her request. And of course, what she don't know don't hurt her. But uh, I don't think so. Oh, OK. Do we need the little man to be here to finish? No, 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 no. I'm good. This is perfect. That's perfect? Well, that was easy. Damn, that was easy. Once we got him in it, I think he was really comfortable. This will stiffen up a little on the side. Not, yeah. not, not too much. We just got to tweak here and there and get everything fit for him, and I think we'll be on a roll for it. That should Where's be our no steering problem. column at, man? This clay, where that need to be? The steering wheel that actually be... needs to be about, about where this is That'd at. That'd be about six, seven inches forward. Right, that would be good. I mean, he liked the seating position, he liked the steering column. He liked where the floorboards were gonna be placed. So, 10 minutes into the visit, man, we're going in the right direction. I hope you're gonna use some good drive shaft components, cause if yes, the drive sir. shaft comes out of there, it's gonna work on somebody. Well, leave. you know, we uh, we could put another loop in there, Miss Clay. You gonna put one further back? We sure can. Okay, I believe I would. If the drive shaft comes apart right there, mm -hmm. you know what it's gonna do. Yeah. It's gonna take your leg off. And then it's gonna take what else off? Yeah, well, I can do without the leg. I can't do without the something else. <laughs> Clay's a, he's a character. Every time he comes in the shop, he keeps us all smiling. He's something else. Can you get in here? I don't have to get in there. You can be driving that. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll be your passenger. We're going to go check the cows in this. I think we were pretty uh, successful getting Clay fit in the car. And we'll basically mount the seat where it needs to be and then finish the tunnel, a steering column, and pedals. I don't see nothing no matter with this. Well, Mr. Clay, if you want to jump out of there, come on, Mr. Clay. Yes. Well, he's going to long leg it. He's going to long leg it. Look at him, man. He stays ready. He's yes, ready. Sir. He well, you don't ready, have to get man. ready. Yes, yep. sir. Yes, sir. That all feels marvelous. Good, good. Good deal. Well, next trip down, Miss Clay, we need a motor. Mm. I'm working on it. All right, Miss Clay. Well, we need to go in the office to talk about this motor. Let's go talk now, about this motor. Now, once you get, as, <laughs> as I've understood <laughs> it, <laughs> once you get this thing built, it. right? He's still talking. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, how much for the trike? Well, go get your motor situation straightened out, and we'll talk about I'm it. I'm capable of doing more than one thing at a time. <laughs>you know what? I have never failed at life at anything I've ever tried, ever. Your rapping career is tanked? Tanked. Tanked. All disappointed, yeah. That's why I want to take up, like, acting. Well, you're acting right now, man. No, Joe, this is reality TV. Like I'm talking crazy, about acting. Crazy redneck bastard right now, man. Man, if somebody made a movie about you, Mike, who would play your part, man? Man, I kind of like want Tommy Lee Jones to do it. Tommy Lee Jones? I was thinking like Billy Bob Thornton, man. Give me that wielder. Give me that wielder. He can play you, Mike. Yeah. Somebody hand me that. Hand me that wielder there. Damn it, I said to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, but I don't need anybody playing. I play my own. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. That's who would play man. your part, dog? Who oh, would man. play Joe Martin? You finish welding all this up, and I'll think about it. Okay. Yeah. Am I gonna have to ask you? You're just gonna come tell uh, me. Hopefully, you'll forget, man. Quit acting like you don't want to work, Joe. Well, I'm gonna need your help, Doug. Since you're a tunnel specialist, here on the 70 Chevelle, now we got the trans tunnel car, clay's fitted in the car, now we can focus on the drive shaft tunnel. Now it's starting to pay attention to you. Yes, sir. Right there. Right, come on back now. Basically what drive shaft tunnel is, it's actually part of the floor, but it's part that has to loop up over the drive shaft, which the drive shaft runs down the middle of the car from the motor to the transmission to the rear end. We need to make it a little bit tighter. What it's gonna do is chase that metal down. We'll have a plenty of room for our brake. Yeah. We're gonna tighten up the roll just a little bit more, and then we'll break the ends in and put some flanges on it, something we can weld it down with. Put the tank roll on it, make it go. And let it just dive on so top of it. Fight that whole one piece. I think it looks sharp, rolling up to that tubing. Okay. okay. Well, you want to, Joe, come on. It looks sharp. Let's come on. <laughs> like one of my kids, come on. There it is. Turn Load it on low. Low. Miss Colody. Keep them fingers crossed. So let's put a little slice right here, buddy. Just a little relief cut, man. Whoop. Hit it real quick. We're just making a few adjustments to the transmission tunnel and the 70 Chevelle. We got it fitting pretty good, but we got a couple of things we're going to do to transition it into the rear drive shaft hoop. Once we do that, we can actually complete the rear part of the floor. Kind of moving from the front of the car to the back, and this is the center section. Once this is done, we can move on to the back, but we can't move on until this is done. That's it, brother. Look at that. Right? Yes. Motor madness. There's always going to be trimming and shaping to get things to fit, but we just got a couple little adjustments to make, and I think we'll be good. Yeah, I think we're there, Mike. Look at that. Oh, that's cool, man. That's real cool. That's man. cool there. Oh, yeah. That's fine. That's good, man. We can stick it right there and be fine with me. Well, get your sticking bridges on. You know what I mean? We'll, uh, stick it right in place, sir. All right, man. Well, hell, Mike, you can uh, start welding that in, and I'll go make some more uh, floor pieces. All right, I'll let you have that, Mike. All right. We're gonna need more people, Brian. Look at that. Onward. Good lord. It, yeah, it is. Tally ho. We just got a cream color sprayed on the 55 Chevy convertible, and really what we're doing was just blending in the color. Now that we got that blended and we got it all uniform, we're gonna do some touch-ups on the green color, and then once we do that point, we'll start masking off for the chrome trim. The uh, strange request on this car was, you know, obviously we have a 55 Chevy here. And a 55 Chevy had a spear that went through in chrome and had another spear coming off here. But Julio wanted to integrate a 56 chrome look with the 55. 56 had these little indentions in the stainless from the factory. And then it had a swooping at the back of the quarter panel, just kind of radius down to the bumper. It's different. That's what Julio wanted. I think we got it knocked out for him. So now it's time to buff it, send it off to the upholstery shop. Is Aaron ready for us? We're oh, going yeah. into Aaron's shop. We're going downtown. Woo! Ramming speed! Coming in hot. <laughs> we look like a bunch of ants on a donut, man. <laughs> All the way over. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. Well, shit, there you go. Merry Christmas, Aaron. Work. We have Julio 65 Bel Air in here, and we're trying to get this convertible top finished up for him. These convertible tops come pre-sewn. They're all one piece, and there's a lot of fitment process. All right, Aaron, I think it's ready. All right, man, you ready to put it down? Yeah. There's a lot of trimming, and there's a lot of stapling and restapling. So it takes a little bit to put them on. Just want to bring it down, and uh, I'll lock yeah, it in place. Yeah. 
Oh, man, it's tight. We really have to stretch this thing and make sure it fits tight. Okay, it's locked in. Everything looks like it fits good. If it doesn't fit tight, we gotta pull it back off, make new adjustments. Hold on, hold on, let me, uh... And fit it one more time until there's no wrinkles and it's just really smooth and clean looking. Okay, it's locked. How's it fit? Man, it looks good. Maybe Check a little this. bit of steamer. Man, Hulu is gonna be excited. All right, Jose. Well, shit, I'll make this movie by myself, dog. I ain't scared. I'll talk enough for everybody. Oh, you guys need me over there? Well, if you want to be in this program. Definitely. We need to see the car and see what it looks like on the ground, man. Yeah. Make sure it's got that alligator stance for That alligator stance? That's what we're going to call it. Alligator stance? The Gator Chevelle, man. Oh, because of Louisiana? Yeah. Here with our 70 Chevelle, we just got to cut loose from the table, so we're going to raise this thing up and assemble the front end there before we can get some tires on it. That's a big old tire, man. Yeah. Put the rear end back in it before we can get the tires on the back. We'll make a roll right up, get out in the middle of the floor for a bacon hoo and all. It's kind of our favorite part, so that's what we're fixing to do. Put the curl on it, man. Yeah, I curl this my peach. Right now, when we put the wheels and tires, it won't be permanent. It's just a mock-up deal kind of a telltale sign for us after all the welding and cutting and stuff. They tell you right quick if you hit it where you want it or not. All right, you go in. Yeehaw. Got it. Good. Someone's like trying to hold on to a wet fish. Come on, push it up, can you? There we go. Sweet. Ah. Come on, Dave, I'm not smelling any better. Just a little in there like butter. Close. All right, I'm on here. Free grip. Got I'm it? Good. Yeah. There we go. Well, let's go in there like that. There we go. There we go. Lord have mercy. That does look bad to the bone, right? All right. No, oh, man, look out. at that, boy. Damn. It even tracks good if no steering on it. Damn. Man, look wow. at that, boy. <laughs> so we just got Mr. Clay's 70 Chevelle on the floor, sitting at ride height, and it's just a stunner. That looks crazy, man. We're stoked. It just motivates us to move to the next level. How badass is that? Damn. Deal? Man, it's comfortable too, isn't it? Now that we've got the car on the ground, basically we'll hang everything back up, put the doors on, the front clip, the bumpers. Just make sure everything's gonna be squared away and be as close to the location they're gonna be. Everything else is like it's finished from... Yeah. We're up to like to the dash, mm -hmm. under the hood, so. Well, I'll get k up and we'll start on the front end. Line it all up, line it up. Okie dokie. Today is the day that Julio and his wife are finally gonna see the 55 Bel Air. The car's had a long road of bad stuff done, and it's been kind of a heartache for Julio, but we uh, got it dialed in for him. Man, this interior for Julio's car was a labor of love. We did some amazing leather seats in it. It's got a really killer gray convertible top, lots of polished aluminum trim that was all handmade. The car is absolutely gorgeous, and we can't wait to show it off to him. Damn, what a hell of a day for a ride. I oh. know, it's perfect. <laughs> Me and Amanda get to kind of live vicariously through these customers. It rides kick ass. This seat is mighty comfortable. Aaron's did a great job. When we get to drive these very expensive cars, pretend like they're ours. Put them through their paces. Yeah. Boy, Julio and his wife are gonna have a ball driving this thing. Yeah. It just all goes together so well. It's definitely a South Beach cruiser ride. Right yes. Here. I think we nailed it. We know we like it, but the important thing is, will Julio like it? Oh, wow. It's beautiful. That is wow. really cool. It's awesome. Tied oh against the my God. trim. Oh. Well done, man. That's what you really think. That is awesome. Thank you. It's gorgeous. Wow. Oh, Amazing. my goodness. I wow. just, I just, Isn't it wow? I was just so pleasantly surprised how well and how beautiful everything looked. Oh, Aaron and Michael, you guys are amazing. Well, you got it, baby. That looks terrific. <laughs> 
to me, you have a certain expectation, but when you see it all together, it just looks 100 times better than I thought it would look. Yeah. I could drive this. I could, I could. <laughs> well, there's a lot of cool things on this car. There's airbrush trim, the stance, the wheels. Yeah, it's got roaster shop frame, LS3. So it's going to make really good power, but it still retains that 55 convertible identity. Well, it's pretty wild with the top down, too, but it looks kind of cool with the top up. Well, are I you going to show it to us? We thought we'd show it to you, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, that green looks great. Oh my what gosh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really cool. I mean, it's a uh, 55 convertible. It's just a cool, rare car, so. It's a head turner. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I know you're looking at the, the, the front of the car, Julio. You, yeah, you're I want to see this. I'm looking forward to seeing this. <laughs> oh, oh man. That so we tied a little cool trim on there. Yeah. And I wanted to put some of the gray on the side to match the, t the roof and stuff. The introduction of the gray oh, was really unique. I wasn't sure it was going to work, but it yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. And, and that artwork fun. that Joe did just kind of put it over the top. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Guys, I, I, I'm going to get emotional. I <laughs> should be. Well, we know what kind of hassles Julio's been dealing with in this car. Well, he's had a lot of heartache with this thing. So to see him get a little choked up, that was, I mean, that was... That says it all. Yeah. It's just been something I wanted to do for 20-something years. And as you guys know, it started off as a bit of a mess with a different group of guys. Yeah. And, and you, you guys stepped up and really made it something special. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you for that. Yes, Julio, sir. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's like this. In life, make it special when you share it with somebody that you love. And so to me, it's not about the car or about the luxury. It's about something really unique that you can share with somebody you love. And so I'm looking forward to sharing it with my bride and my, my five sons and more grandchildren to come. Hey, Mike, I, I was uh, laying in bed last night. What happened? I had uh, dreams of the Chevelle roof. What's wrong with it? Well, there's nothing wrong with it, but I know you're probably gonna frown on this, Mike. What are you getting at, Joe? Well, I think we're gonna chop the Chevelle today, brother. I'm not sure what happened, but that wasn't in the plan, so it was not good. We almost got this car done, Joe. But wouldn't it look cool, Mike? Look, just a little bit. Coolness has nothing to right do here. with it, son. We, you didn't think right we're gonna have problems here in the shop? Just playing all about that? When Mr. Clay asked me, he said, do you like the car? I said, man, I sure do, Clay. What would you do different? I said, man, I'd chop the roof on this son bitch. You ain't playing. Yeah. No. Yeah, we should have done that to start with, Joe. I don't know. Why'd you wait till the last minute? There's a lot of shit that goes on here when you cut a top. Hmm. We still got plenty of work to do besides that. Huh. What was K-Dub at when that conversation was going on? Yeah, before you launch it. You know, when you get emotionally attached to a car, and the daytime Emmy goes to Bama Brown. A fun fact, huh? Stop! I'm pretty fun, that's a fact. How about that? <laughs> that right there, people, was gold. I'm a poet and didn't even know it. I used to have a little business on the side. I had to sign everybody's progress reports. Did you charge your car? 25 cents, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll give him some love at the end there tonight, yeah.